This is an ABC podcast. Lockdowns across Victoria and parts of New South Wales are keeping millions of people from their ordinary lives, including work and spending what they earn. Do not leave your home unless you absolutely have to. This moves quick and a problem anywhere becomes a problem everywhere. And in New South Wales, four weeks into the lockdown there, the rules are getting tougher. There's a new definition for essential retail and a two-week ban from today on all building work, a decision that led to protests in Sydney over the weekend. Convoy of trucks is making its way across Sydney this afternoon. It's travelled over some of the city's major bridges, apparently to protest the shutdown of the city's construction industry. All the while, case numbers in both states are continuing to grow, leading to suggestions the current lockdowns will be extended again. I'm Ange Lavoie-Pierre. And I'm Stephen Smiley. And today on The Signal, epidemiologists agree that twin lockdowns in Victoria and New South Wales are necessary. But economists point out they come with a hefty price tag. So how much is this going to cost us? And is it still a price we should be willing to pay? So the double lockdown Australia is living through at the moment is really a story of a single outbreak. It began when the virus leaked out via a limo driver at Sydney Airport and three removalists from Sydney then carried it to Melbourne. Right, and while the outbreaks are one and the same, the responses on either side of the border began differently because while New South Wales resisted a hard lockdown for several days, Victoria made the call fast. This was the Premier, Daniel Andrews, in Melbourne on Thursday. You only get one chance to go hard and go fast. If you wait, if you hesitate, if you doubt, then you will always be looking back wishing you had done more earlier. I am not prepared to avoid a five-day lockdown now only to find ourselves in a five-week or a five-month lockdown. So different roads, but as of today, both states are in basically the same place because the New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian used the weekend to bring in new restrictions for Sydney after daily case numbers moved back into triple digits. It's not good enough for us to tread water, which is what we're doing now. We've, to some extent, stabilised it, but we're not managing to get that to quash that curve, to get that curve to come down. None of this is easy and none of us would have made this decision, made these decisions unless it was based on the health advice. We're already in lockdown and we're asking our community to go that step further until July 30. All right, so what is the economic impact going to be from the way this has been handled? Well, um, I kind of wish the Premier had gone a little bit harder and a little bit earlier because it seems to me that, you know, this strain of the, the COVID virus is so virulent and we're, we're, we're bearing the cost of, of that now. This is Nikki Hutley. She's an economist at a consultancy called Social Outcomes and she's in lockdown in Sydney. It's hard, though, to kind of really get a finger on this time because certain shops have been open when last time they were closed and we've literally only just had three weeks in these more strict orders and that might helpfully, hopefully get things under control a little bit more more quickly. But with over a 1,000 cases in the community, it, it's really alarming and I, I think a lot of us, for various reasons, um, have a have a little bit of heightened anxiety because it's not only here we go again, but it's it's harder because we thought we'd got past this. So um, it's yeah, a lot of a lot of stress and strain, even for people who's still able to say work from home. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the two different states and the specific impact on workers and businesses there. So uh, obviously the situation in Victoria will will really depend on how long this lockdown goes for them. But in New South Wales, um, we're a little way in now. How acute is the situation three and a half weeks since uh, the the lockdown came into place? Are we seeing businesses go bust or or individuals unable to make rent? Look, we're not yet seeing businesses go bust, but we know that there's a very large number, and we knew this last year as well, there's a very large number of businesses out there who basically have anywhere between six weeks and three months of cash flow. Now, we know government support worked really well and really quickly last year through JobKeeper in particular, but also other supports to help those businesses through. And we actually saw um, lower numbers of businesses going under than we would in, in an ordinary year. And that is the crux of all of that is how quickly does government support get to people who need it 
And although we haven't acted probably as quickly as I would have liked to have seen in this outbreak, we've still compared to the last one, the supports are coming through relatively quickly. Um, they are complicated and they will take time for people to access them, but it should help most people. The government has asked for anyone, you know, whether you're a, it's got commercial or residential um, uh, a property owner to make sure that you're um, holding off on on demanding payments. The banks are similarly um, showing that they're willing to defer mortgage payments for people affected. So I think to some extent we're doing this a little bit better than we were last time because we know what to expect. So hopefully most people will know where to go to get the support and to you know make sure that they're asking for help where where they need it. Now, obviously, in Victoria, it's uh, it's an earlier point in the lockdown. Hopefully, it's a short one. But I guess in Victoria, you have this compounding effect, right, where you've had lockdown after lockdown after lockdown. What does that do to, to bank balances and bottom lines um, in, 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 in Victoria? Yeah, well, I think we're we're seeing you know bigger numbers of of, of failures or or firms just not able to reopen. Um, I think you know the lockdown towards the end of last year really was the nail in the coffin, unfortunately, for many small businesses. We're seeing particularly how CBDs are being affected. Um, really, you know, Melbourne CBD particularly, um, but and Sydney to a lesser extent, absolute ghost towns. And you could see that in you know even when the CBDs were reopening, that in both those cities, you know, food courts, for example. Example: 50% of the of the shop owners were not opening um, because there just aren't enough people. And the hybrid working model, even when we're not in lockdown, the hybrid working model has really affected um, central CBDs, which is where a lot of business actually takes place. So all those downstream supporting businesses have been particularly hard hit. But you know, I, my heart goes out to Victorians because you know they have just done it much more tough than tougher than anybody else. Um, and yeah, you can't. There are businesses that just can't keep going through this. But as I said, I think it's really important to remember that there is masses of amounts of support. So even though we saw GDP take a massive hit last year, what we didn't see was a similar fall in household incomes because we saw that government support coming through, and that was why we were able to bounce back in economic terms. And obviously, for individual people and businesses, some of them haven't been able to do that. But for those that have survived with, you know, takeaway or click and collect or online, um, you know, for some of those, they have been able to, to, to hang on by the skin of their teeth. Right. So different patterns in two different states. Melburnians are really feeling the cumulative effect of five lockdowns and people in New South Wales so far are doing all right economically, but they will be at greater risk if this lockdown stretches into August. But in both cases, Nikki says it's the details of the government support that will determine whether the national economy bounces back as fast as it did last year. We do want to get into the detail of the support in a second, but um, let's just also take stock of an, another change. And this is kind of new in, in in the life of the pandemic, which is this ban on construction that's coming in in New mm. South Wales. It's a two week ban at this point. Obviously, there'll be a pause on all construction, small or large. We don't underestimate the impact this has on our businesses. We appreciate that. But what is really important for us is to give business every chance to bounce back. I mean, what what could the economic hit of this be? Well, we're looking at um, multiple billions. We know the property sector is is around ten percent of the economy, and that's sort of the, the the main part of the sector that doesn't include all of the flow on impacts. It's such a critical part of the Australian economy, mm. and all sorts of flow on. If you think about all of the you know the 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 Bunningses of the world that we're doing quite quite well during lockdown because people were taking on additional projects. You now can't do any of that. A lot of the stimulus that the government put in place last year was around home builder, you know, putting in extensions or new homes. So that part of the, you know, the stimulus was working incredibly well and giving a really big boost to the economy. And that's now not able to happen. If it's only two weeks, it's not great but it's also not the end of, you know, we'll survive it. Um, there are most, most of these companies shouldn't go broke on the basis of two weeks of, of, of pause, but clearly it will create hardship for, for a lot of people because a lot of these workers are contractors. They might be self-employed um, and they're going to need to get on to, um, to the, to the helplines and, and get assistance very quickly. 
and the New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian as well as the state's Treasurer Dominic Perrottet were both asked for clarity around that construction ban in Sydney. I ask you about the construction industry and probably the same question for Mr Perrottet. What exemptions are there for critical work? Do you think uh, construction workers should be forced to take annual leave right now? It's not exactly not fair the, on them, is it? Uh, of course, if you need something in your home to keep your family safe, there is no issue with that. Um, we don't want anyone to feel that they're going to get in trouble for fixing something in their house that's going to keep them and their family safe during these difficult times. The large government projects are not happening. Uh, this is not a precise science and there will be issues that come up uh, from time to time. And in relation to the workforce, um, what I would say uh, to all workers right across the state, regardless what industry that you are in, if you have had your hours reduced, you can apply uh, for ongoing payments during this period of time. Let's talk about that support. So at the moment, um, for individuals in New South Wales, what, what is the offer from the federal government in terms of that economic support? So it's kind of gone a little bit back to where it was around the job seeker um, part two level, I guess, mm-hmm. which is if you're working 20 hours or less, you can get $375 a week. If you're working 20 hours or more, you can get $600 a week. So not quite as generous as it was um, at the start, but um, similar to, to where it got to towards the end. And, and how far does that go to making up the, the shortfall? Well, it doesn't go very far at all. The minimum wage is over $700. So it's, um, you know, for people on full-time work, that's going to be um, a, a really big cut to their income. Um, hopefully it's enough to get people through, but it's literally enough to get them through. That's all. Um, if you're a, 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 you know, low-income household, um, you you might not be losing so much, but for the average worker, you're going to be losing um, a fair amount of income. Um, it's it's pretty tight. I guess it's more generous than um, than what if you're on, on the job seeker payment, but um, that's not saying very much, is it? Because that's below the poverty line. And there's also some specific support to businesses uh, in, in Sydney. This is a, a joint uh, Commonwealth and New South Wales government um, offer. How, how does that work? And, and is that going to sort of help smooth things over through this through this lockdown? Yeah. So again, it works a little bit similar to um, the job keeper. So if you've got a 30% decline in turnover or more, if you've but you've got to have more than $75,000 um, income up to $50 million. Then you can claim um, anywhere between around $1,500 and up to $10,000, um, depending on, on the size of, you know, how many people you're em- employing. Um, if you're a non-employing business, so you're just a sole trade trader, you can get up to $1,000 a week. And that will be a big loss for a lot of people that will that will be quite meaningful people who were typically on on you know up to 75,000 that could be could be a big loss now obviously Nikki we we're talking a lot about New South Wales here but there's obviously a lockdown in Victoria too what kinds of supports are available from the Commonwealth and the Victorian government in that state yeah, so for individuals, the support is is the same. Um, the government, federal government, has obviously had to come to the party um, as recently as you know a month ago. They were offering um, almost no support to um, to individuals. It was up to the to the state government, uh, and the state government has been offering um, much smaller support payments to to businesses. Um, you know, around two and three thousand um, dollars if you're um, in in the sort of any type of hospitality or affected business. Mm. So it was a little bit smaller than they're offering. But of course, you know, that's if you if you're lost locked down for a week or more. So it'll just depend on how long this goes. But one of the interesting things is that the um, the Victorian government is is also helping those in regional Victoria even though the federal government isn't hasn't declared them, you know, they're not a declared hotspot. So everybody that's been affected in any way, and that goes for New South Wales as well, will be will, is entitled. So if you've had someone come to your region, even if you're not in lockdown yet um, or full lockdown, then you can get some sort of support payment um, from the from the Victorian government. Okay, so that's the support package as it stands. COVID disaster payments from the federal government for individuals in both states and support for businesses who've lost income from the respective state governments. There are, however, some differences between the two states, largely because, as Nikki says, it's still relatively early days in Victoria. Yeah, so I guess the big question is, is all of this going to, you know, stave off a recession? Well, Nikki thinks things are looking all right on that front for now. 
as I have said right from the beginning of, of this thing, the health outcome dictates the economic outcome. And I'm trying to be optimistic and think that we will get on top of this. Um, we, The numbers in New South Wales, while scary, are not as bad as they were um, last, last year at the height of the first wave. So if we can get on top of this quickly, then we can reopen. And we've seen how quickly the economy can bounce back because of the government supports that are in place. And that state supports, you know, right across the board, not just um, individual business payments. And that's what's helped us last time. Of course, if this thing gets out of hand and if, as you know, we've heard some some health people saying, if we don't get tougher lockdown now, this could run till Christmas, um, you know, and, and that is fills me with alarm because the worst case scenario is that we have terrible health and economic outcomes, not to mention, you know, the social and mental health costs that go, go with all of this. Um, it's all predicated on we can get on top of this. Um, and, you know, we've seen other states do it. The, the big question is, did the Premier in New South Wales go too slowly, too late? Um, was the health advice wrong? And are we, you know, set to be here for months? If that's the case, then yes, we cannot avoid a recession. However, at this point in time, we've all got to be a little bit hopeful and optimistic and think that, you know, we're talking about a 7 billion, 10 billion hit to the economy anyway, because we will, we will still have some form of restriction probably for at least another month, possibly more. But if we can get out of this, you know, before we get into the, into this fully, fully into spring and summer, then we can be hopeful. Yeah. So, on balance, um, as, an, as an economist, Nikki, do, do you see that the lockdowns are worth it in New South Wales and Victoria? Look, this is an interesting question that economists have been debating um, since the, the outset of, of, of COVID. You know, does the cost towards mental health and, um, you know, lost employment, you know, is, is all of that that worth it um, to save um, lives, often lives of, of much older people? And I think the trouble is while economists want to do a cost-benefit analysis of, of, of everything, as, as we should, it's impossible to do it. Um, in this case, we don't know all of the outcomes. We we don't know. I mean, yes, of course, it, this affects people's mental health. But if you let the virus run wild, we know that the economy doesn't necessarily do any 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 better. Uh, and we know that you still lose lives. You know that people will be living um, in fear. You just can't put dollar figures under all of those things. And ultimately, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is avoid being like an Italy or like a US or, or a Brazil or, or even an India where we have thousands and thousands of deaths, the hospital system completely overwhelmed, you know, mass despair. You know, that is a, a massive burden on the economy. And whilst, of course, this is going to add to long-term debt in terms of government debt, that is something that we can deal with over the longer term. To me, you know, if you ask me what's the value of a life of my mother or my child, I know an economist can put a statistical value on that, but in human terms, you just can't. That's The Signal for today. If you'd like to get in touch with us, our email is thesignal at abc.net.au. And we'll catch you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to an ABC podcast. Discover more great ABC podcasts, live radio and exclusives on the ABC Listen app.